Hey there, I'm Scott. This is Tangents. Well, today, and it is Friday the 4th of, uh, I was going to say January, but it's already February 2022 as I record this. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about narcissism. And before I, before I get into this, I, I touched on a little bit of mental health stuff in the previous one, or maybe it was two back. And I certainly want to say, I want to preface this by saying, uh, this is the era of Dunning-Kruger. I am not in any way trained in this domain. It is not my area of expertise. I am at most, you know, kind of maybe slightly more than casually interested in psychology. And I've studied it a little bit. I've taken some classes in it, but I am not an expert. So anything I say here uh, hopefully is not like way out in left field, but I do want to, I do want to preface this by saying, you know, I am not that kind of doctor. Um, anything that I may touch on, um, I'm going to try to stick to things that I know are true, but extra little caveat and asterisk on this episode. So the thing that I wanted to talk about and the thing, it, it was kind of a confluence of different influences that kind of made me want to talk about this but i was recording the other one and talking about um really like psychosomatic diseases and things like this and a combination of that coming up and people talking about uh january 6th and uh, the insurrection and all this kind of stuff trump in general kind of made me think about trump and biden and I, I have, I hate, I hate talking about all of this shit. I hate talking about politics, but like the fucking pandemic, it's almost inescapable and it's very much at the forefront of my mind. So hard to get, hard to get away from. So I, I have a bunch of people in my life who think Biden is unquestionably better than Trump. I have a bunch of people in my life who think they are either the same or some think Biden is worse. I would say that I totally empathize with people in all three camps. I kind of get where you're coming from. Um, Biden is extremely problematic. Yeah, I, I certainly want to say that. Many, many problems. I am not a fan of the person. Um, I, I think he is, to, to say he's like, with Trump, you know, you'll look at him and you'll say, okay, that, this guy's a pathological liar. Well, Biden as well. And the difference is really that Trump's lies are just completely absurd. I mean, it, you know, I, which is not in any way an excuse for his lies, but they're just so ridiculous that, you know, it's like the lies of a salesman and not a very clever one. Uh, this is the best, the greatest, I'm number one, all this kind of stuff. And, you know, it's just, it falls apart. People are saying, you know, falls apart very quickly. Biden lies, I would say, if you actually like jot down all the statements that he makes and you look at the number of truths and falsehoods that he makes, I think he probably lies about as much as Trump does. Um, the difference being that Biden is much more fluent in his lying. Um, I, I, I think the type example for this, the thing to reference that's really like seared into my mind and the place where I saw and I really felt this was his one debate with Bernie. And he was there, and the, the only reason that I even knew that he was lying was because I was very familiar with a lot of the stuff that came up. And they were talking, and Biden was just, just lying about stuff so brazenly. And the, the frustrating thing for me, and I know many other people, was that Bernie did not challenge him on it. Uh, that was annoying. And, you know, I mean, part of it was uh, defaming Bernie and part of it was claiming things that he had done, he being Biden, which he hadn't actually done. Uh, it was just, you know, like not, uh, not good. Um, and it, it was a little disturbing to me also just because I'm sitting there like, I, I just came from this motherfucker Trump. I don't need this other motherfucker Biden uh, lying like this. It's, it's not, you know, I, I would like somebody who's... Like, why is it such a fucking big ask to get somebody who's not a massive liar? I understand, like, there are people who will say, well, all politicians lie. 
Yes, all politicians lie to some extent, maybe. Yeah, depending on your definition of lying. But there are definitely, you know, there's a spectrum of lies. And the lies that these two people tell are just beyond the pale. They're just like out there, you know? Um, so if you're trying to compare them, who is worse? Biden versus Trump. I think Trump probably tells bigger lies. Biden tells lies that are harder to identify as such, unless you have some more knowledge. I would say that's almost a wash. Yeah. Um, you could go one way or another, but to me, it's not, it's not clear who is worse there. Um, now Biden, and this is the, the reason that I voted for Biden versus Trump, the primary one, and th this is not the only one, but the primary one is just that Biden is in a group who at least kind of pretend to care about government and the ideals of government, the idea of regulations and running things and all of this kind of stuff. And so to some extent, and this is, I can feel both parties or all, people in especially the groups that are like anti-Biden and anti-Trump, I can feel you like arguing with me already. So I hear you, but Biden's nominations are not as bad as Trump's. Now they're not good. This is the fucking problem because if you had, like if they were good, you could just say, you know, okay, they're almost all good. They're, eh, one or two shitty ones, but they're pretty much good. Versus Trump's, you know, I mean, Trump's are ridiculously awful. Uh, unbelievably awful. Now, of course, Biden picked people who could have gotten rid of DeJoy and none of them did. They voted again to retain him. So, you know, Biden's not great. Um, he's also interested in defunding Social Security and privatizing stuff and, you know, privatizing the post office and all, all of this sort of neoliberal project bullshit, um, just which to me is profoundly stupid. But He's into it. Um, so that part is a wash. But Trump does, for whatever it's worth, well, okay. So like, you talk about the EPA or um, you know, the Department of the Interior. Biden has at least tried to issue more um, permits for drilling than, than Trump did, which is fucking insane because Trump did a lot. You know, there, there are some things that are better, some things are worse. Kind of a wash there, but I would say Biden has a slight, slight edge, uh, depending on how you look. Certainly for judges, his, his judicial picks are better. But the problem with Biden and, I mean, generally the, the Democrats, like you look at Obama, Garland didn't get, um, didn't get uh, confirmed, but Garland is kind of, I mean, you can see him as um, attorney general. He's just like, meh, you know? Not really, I mean, he's like a Tim Kaine kind of guy. Like, there's just nothing, it's like, eh, yeah, just, there's nothing there. There's no, there's no substance. There's no real, you know, gusto, or there's no real rudder even. It's just kind of bobbing in the ocean is my impression. And meanwhile, the Republicans have these Federalist judges who were literally basically just created in a lab to to legislate from the bench, the Democrats see that and then they go, oh, we're, we care about the, we're, we care about government looking good, so we're going to pick people who really are neutral. Yeah, it, it's not, you can't play, you can't play football and have one team be playing by the rules and have the other team just do whatever the fuck they want and completely disregard the rules. It doesn't work, yeah? Now, I'm not saying both people should be disregarding the rules, but, yeah, I mean, the thing is also, the Democrats aren't doing anything to make sure that the rules are are protected. I mean, you look at, you look at uh, just uh, the, uh, I, have, I have mixed feelings on this, but like the voting rights legislation, none of the stuff that's been proposed by the Democrats really completely addresses many of the things that the Republicans are doing. Um, interestingly, and I'm not sure how this happened, but in Arizona, they had something which was going to let the state legislature override the voters um, in terms of certifying elections. And they just today, maybe it was yesterday, but just basically killed that in committee. Um, and Republicans did it. 
Republican chair of the committee did it. So there are some, I mean, in Arizona's Republicans <laughs> are fucking nuts. So there are some people who are at least sometimes okay. But if they wanted to, and in many states they have pushed this a little bit further, you know, they're, they can easily do that. They have a 6-3, I was going to say 6-2 for some reason, but they have a 6-3 uh, Supreme Court. Although there's an interesting thing, like Breyer finally uh, decided to step down, and we have uh, 50 Democrats in the Senate. One of them had a stroke. So at the moment, we have a 49. Now, he, he's supposed to recover, probably be back. But, you know, it's just like this tenuous, barely can do anything with the VP as the sort of tiebreaker. And they're fucking around this long doing nothing. They're not adding any judges to the bench or justices to the, to the Supreme Court. They're not doing anything like imposing, you know, some kind of term limit that's not your full fucking life, which I don't know. I, to me, I, I don't know. I, I just don't see people doing the same job for 40 years being a good thing. It seems completely insane. And I think Breyer is a perfect example of that because this is a person who, like the last time that he was even connected to reality, I mean, it was the 90s, right? It was a time, it was a different time to say, to say the least. It was not anything like uh, the present. And you just look at that and you're like, how can people even, yeah, and, and then you listen to him talk about uh, how he doesn't want to politicize the court. I, they're living in a just de detached fantasy world. So anyway, getting through all that, uh, the Democrats marginally better, but they're not really fighting for a lot of the things. They're not really protecting this stuff. They're certainly not doing anything to, for example, look at the ways that Trump uh, sort of stretched the limits and, uh, you know, kind of exposed a lot of real weaknesses in terms of checks and balances on the president. If I was in Congress, I mean, it, to me, like the first fucking thing you do, and I understand why the Democrats don't want to do this because you don't want to limit yourself, but at the same time, you just saw that. The very first thing I would have done is say like, hey, maybe we should actually fix some of the shit and let's, you know, impose some constraints, right? Don't make it so easy for the president to just do whatever the fuck he wants or she, they, you know. But yeah, it, it just like, and they're, they're not touching that at all. Um, but anyway, you know, marginally better in a lot of ways. <clears throat> I don't think it's a complete slam dunk. I'm kind of in the, you know, basically Biden is a bit better, but not much. But, but, and here's the, the massive but. I think the one place where the two really are distinctly different and the place that, and, and I know I, I can also hear people before I get to this that are going to say, you know, Scott, they're both like that. No, they're, I'm sorry, they're not. I think it's pretty clear. And again, not a clinician. I have no training in the subject. I am just an amateur, so massive grain of salt. But it's hard to look at Trump and not conclude that he is, you know, I, I would say has basically, and I, I'm trying not to diagnose, but if you saw someone with the characteristics that he had and you looked at the DSM, you probably would think, um, every single one of the criteria for narcissistic personality disorder is met by that person. And in fact, to such an extent that it's almost like you're making, because I, I, this is just me going from memory here, so I'll probably be wrong, but I think there are seven or maybe it's nine, some number of criteria, the, the way the DSM works. There are these criteria, and I think it's like you have to have five. So... You don't have to have, it might even be nine, but you have to have like five of them. He has all of them and not only has them, but like to such an extent that it's like you're making a character and you want a little overboard, you know, you're making a dish and you just put all of, all of the spices in. you just didn't, you have no restraint on it. It, it almost doesn't seem like a real human being because it is so over the top. So, you know, and, and maybe, okay, maybe. Any politician has a little bit of narcissism, but there's a very big difference between, you know, having narcissism 
being a bit of a narcissist and having like a severe disorder, having a severe personality problem. And I think Trump, again, not diagnosing the guy, but it's hard to look at him and not conclude that he has it. Um, and when you look at that also, I mean, the, there are a number of things that I think are really concerning about that. Because first of all, um, you, know, you look at uh, the, the properties of someone with this and having, uh, having an overinflated ego. I mean, the, the disturbing thing, if a random person tells you, you know, I'm going to be president one day, uh, that would be almost, you know, obviously not by itself, but it's a definite like ding in the, maybe you're a narcissist. You think you're gonna, it's, it's an unrealistic kind of goal. Uh, you know, I'm gonna be the ruler, the supreme ruler of the world is not that much further from there. You get somebody like Trump, who again, I think, I suspect, I don't know, I suspect has narcissistic personality disorder, maybe, allegedly. Um, you get someone like that and you give them that, it's just pouring gasoline on a fucking fire, right? And then, yeah, and you keep adding to this stuff. On top of all of this, and I think his lying and his all, you know, I, I, I'm not, again, not my domain. I'm not gonna go through all of the cluster B stuff. I'm not gonna go through the criteria in the DSM. But if you look up the DSM, um, he's there. He's like, the, literally, like they took his picture and put it in there. Um, it seems to me, in my non-expert opinion. So you have that, and that is an extremely dangerous person. That is somebody who, now, luckily not dangerous necessarily in certain ways, like he's maybe, maybe safe to assume that he's not going to want to just like blow up the world. Um, which is a fucking scary thing. Yeah. I mean, this is a thing. I, I always... We have all of these nuclear weapons. We've never... Other than Hiroshima and Nagasaki. We've never used them in, in battle. But the thing is, they're so tempting. Like, if you were... If you were a general, and you're like, okay, we can send all these troops and all this equipment and all this stuff to a forward position and get them deployed and we have all this time that it takes and we have to, you know, supply them and get all this stuff going and we can do this to take out a, a spot. Or, and especially when you have an ICBM, um, you can just target those MIRVs to like, okay, this is, I'm going to hit here, 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 and here and press a button and half an hour later those places no longer exist. Um, yeah, it's... Now, the danger of having somebody attack back you know, is pretty real, but if you just imagine you had that and there was no consequence to using it, it's, it's a scary thing because it's a, it's, a fr it's a fucking rational thing to do, frankly, if to, in the irrational mindset of someone who commits war. Um, yeah. But anyway, so that it, it scares the shit out of me because it's like, I mean, you look at all these people wanted to use these things like in Korea and they didn't the first use taboo kind of held but that does it seems metastable right it seems like something that is not going to hold forever and especially like you take away mad and now you have a bunch of people with a bunch of these weapons it almost seems inevitable that there will be some time when somebody will let one loose and once somebody does, even, and it, actually it's worse, especially if it's a small tactical, well, small on the scale of nuclear is you know, relative, but a small tactical nuclear weapon. Um, you use something like that, and then the threshold for that is pretty small. And especially like ICBM, you can imagine you're triggering a uh, defense net and, you know, missiles are passing each other in the air, but you could have, I mean, we have cruise missiles that we fire with conventional warheads all the time. And in a practical sense, I mean, you know, as, as horrible as those nuclear detonations over Japan were, I mean, firebombing cities is pretty fucked up too. You know, you look at the, and, and in fact, from the ground, I'm not sure, you know, I guess if you, if you get the bright flash and radiation poisoning, then there's a difference. But if you're on the ground and you're burning to death and your skin is peeling off, 
Um, I don't know if you could tell the difference between what got you. And in terms of the number of people killed and the amount of damage, it's pretty fucking, you know, you create a firestorm. It is a horrific thing, and that's conventional weapons. And the, the one slight maybe saving grace is that uh, people really like super pre precision targeted stuff, although precision targeted is kind of a, yeah. I mean, the U.S. just killed uh, a bunch of kids a couple days ago, you yeah. know. Precision is a relative term, right? Uh, but that's much better than, in some sense, killing an entire city and blinding a bunch of people and you know, doing all of the harm that that would entail. But yeah, it's, it's easy enough to imagine you start that and then you start escalating and escalating and escalating. It scares me. But anyway, rolling back to, to Trump. The, the reason that I think Trump is more dangerous than Biden, Biden kind of maintains the status quo He's very invested in the status quo. Trump, and again, under the assumption that he has narcissistic personality disorder, he has this, like, wound, essentially. I, you know, just, um, you know, this need to be adored and to have people, you know, love him and hold him up and put him in this kind of elevated position. Now, when that kind of thing is threatened, um, you know, when the thing, the walls start collapsing and the facade falls apart. People with this condition, just in general, will do almost anything. You know, it's, they're extremely dangerous and unpredictable. And again, Trump is like several standard deviations from, he's not like, you know, oh, normal person with the NPD. He's like the max, I mean, okay, obviously nobody's the maximum, but you know, he, he's almost what you could imagine as the maximum of someone with this. Or at least, again, my opinion, allegedly all that stuff. Disclaimer, disclaimer, disclaimer. So, you know, you look at that and you're like, okay, what does somebody like that do um, when that's, that's threatened? January 6th would be one example. Now, we got lucky, you know, and I would say also, I mean, we got lucky a bunch of times. The you know, he kind of redlined the engine and things held together, kind of. They, like, buckled a little bit, but basically nothing blew up. It's so easy to imagine um, that not being the case, right? And the harm that could happen, the, the harm that could be done when you take somebody like that, I mean, imagine if he succeeded in uh, overturning the election. I mean, once you've done one, you know, who cares that you have a term limit and, yeah. Let's just do another one. Yeah, you know, what the hell? Why, in fact, why even have an election? It's, it's just kind of, you know, we know I'm the greatest. I'm going to, you know, it's easy to imagine bad things. And it scares the shit out of me, frankly. It, it not just scares the shit out of me, but I've had, I've had this feeling of like a rat on a sinking ship that I just need to get the fuck out of here. Like I'm just crawling in my skin. Um, these, these wounds, they will not heal. No, but you know, I, I'm just like, Itching, like, oh shit. Uh, this place, the fucking dog with the, the coffee cup in the place that's on fire. I feel like that, except I feel like, oh shit, this fucking place is burning. I need to get the fuck out of here. Uh, the problem is, of course, and one of the reasons I haven't gone anywhere yet, is I don't know where the fuck I would go. Because you look at, um, you look at all of these other countries which have similar kinds of things going on. And... Uh, yeah, it's, there's no obvious place to me to go. Uh, similarly, tangentially related, um, in terms of like the people masking and doing just these bare minimum things to save other people's lives, people aren't doing that here. They're flipping it all over the world. And it's just like you look at it and it's like, I don't even know where to go there. And, you know, you imagine like... Where, where the fuck do you go? Where do you... Now, there are certain places that are better than here, for sure. But even in those places, there are anti-vaxxers and anti-maskers. And it's just like... Um, they, I mean, short of maybe China. And China has its own host of um, problems, let's just say. One thing I will say, like, I... China, I think, has done a very... In fact, 
assuming that the numbers that they're presenting are correct, and I, th I, I really think they probably are, they have done an incredible job, especially compared to us. Now granted, a little bit of totalitarian, totalitarianism in there, but at the same time, you know, if we wanted to do test, trace, and isolate, uh, we could. We, it's ridiculous how many things we have like that. We should just have a World Health Organization vaccine passport um, that just is in your phone and your entire vaccination history is just in there. Anyone can get it and you could use that. We have just this crazy paranoia about basic things like that that keep us from doing stuff that should just be a given. You know, it should just be, you shouldn't have 50 different apps to do this stuff. You shouldn't have, you know, in some places you have an app, some places you don't have an app. You have this massive index card thing that's unwieldy that you have to carry around and uh, you better not get it destroyed because if you do, then uh, I don't know, maybe you're not allowed to go in someplace. It's just, it's so dumb the way that, it, and again, should just be a no-brainer. But again, the people that I know who think Biden is as bad or worse than Trump. A lot of them also have, you know, well, there's a range, but I know enough people where they think like China is ridiculously better than it is, which is obviously untrue. They think, uh, yeah, I, I, there are people who I know who think DPRK is, is good. And, uh, you know, everything that we hear that's bad about them is just propaganda. I, I mean, I'm sorry, but there are a lot of people that are like detached from reality and uh, it's hard to it's hard to really interact with a lot of people because of this kind of stuff you have people like that you have the maga people you have the people who think biden is fucking awesome and the the most annoying ones there for me um sit there and biden's doing everything he can you know it's totally um because no he's not, not even a little bit not even and then i don't know I don't know. I just, I can't even. So here I am and I'm just thinking like, I'm thinking I would like to get the fuck out of here. It's like, check please. Um, but I don't know where to go. And will I or will I not? I don't know. I, I go back and forth a lot. There, you know, I, I'm very, like the two sides of that in my way of looking at it are, I feel like I have some responsibility to stay and fight for the people who don't have the option to go. And I also feel like, you know, it's, I'm not sure that I could do that much there. And just from sheer self-interest, it's maybe, you know, and again, like if Trump gets reelected and who knows, maybe it's just four years, one and done, things go back to normal. Maybe it's not a big deal. Um, I, I would be, well, I don't really want Trump for four years again, but I'd be thrilled if it's just like that and it's not that bad. I have a horrible fear that bad things could happen. And I, I, I talk to people, spending time on Twitter just makes me feel fucking insane because I am talking to people who like think the pandemic is over, which obviously, you know. And then you talk to people who think the DPRK is good, which no, I'm sorry. Uh, and then you talk to people who think, or, or that China is perfect. I mean, you know, China has some good stuff, but they have some really bad stuff. Really, really bad shit. Um, yeah, it should be, or, or the Soviet Union. Yeah. And it, you just, it's like, it's, it's frustrating to talk to people because you have a certain understanding of reality and theirs is extremely incongruent and I would say wrong. In many of these cases, not to say that I'm always like the ultimate arbitrator of truth, but some of these things I know a little bit about, and I do think a lot of people are wrong about these things. But what I was trying to get to is, um, man, I completely lost the train of thought there. I just got so, uh, but the, on Twitter, I start feeling insane because you talk to people and like I had somebody say that they feel like, oh, the things are as bad, you know, we're a total we're already a totalitarian state. And it's like, I, I'm sorry, but you know, this is not the same as Germany in World War II. And when you talk to people that think that, I mean, th these are similar. You also, you find people who compare like vaccinations to wearing, or to being forced to wear a Star of David. I mean, yeah, 
there are some crazy motherfuckers out there that, you know, just annoy the shit out of me. But you, know, you talk to these people and they're like, oh, well, you know, you're very privileged because you think that things can get worse. It's like, no, I'm sorry. Things can get worse and not just for me. They can get a lot worse for the people that are already in a fucked up position. And the fact that people don't see that scares me. I mean, honestly, like Trump in and of himself would not be that bad. Trump in a place where people don't recognize or, you know, maybe they like throw around, oh, he's just such a narcissist. They throw that shit around. They don't understand that, yeah, he's got a serious mental disorder, allegedly. Yeah. And it has a lot of really serious consequences and putting somebody in that position with that condition into a position of power is inherently and extremely dangerous. And, you know, I mean, people also just don't realize, like, things can go really downhill. I mean, you know, you're like, oh, life sucks. Well, yeah, life sucks, but people aren't getting rounded up and put into camps. They're not getting, like, and, and cops do murder people, but they're also not just, like, willy-nilly, bang, 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 shooting a bunch of protesters, you know. Like, in terms of orders of magnitude, things can get much, much worse. And we could be a much more totalitarian, totalitarian state. And the fact that people don't recognize this scares me. Uh, the fact that people don't recognize that Trump is as dangerous as he is scares me. The fact that the Democrats are just fucking around scares me. The fact that they're not doing anything to reform the courts or fix the Senate. Uh, you know, we have a non-representative Senate. And, you know, partly that's like not that big of a deal because it just ossifies everything and keeps us from getting shit done. But partly it also means that the Republicans are going to be in power and be able to nominate and uh, confirm a lot of judges and do a lot of really bad shit where the Democrats are kind of fucked over. And you know, you look at that, you just go through this list of stuff and people are not taking these things seriously. And that's the part that scares me because it's like, okay, I mean like, like this fucking disease. Right now, the idea is kind of let her rip. Omicron's just gonna, and in fact, I run into people that talk about this shit. They're like, oh, all, all those anti-vaxxers will just, and I'm, I'm, to be clear, I'm not a fan of anti-vaxxers. I do not like these people. But they're not solely responsible for the pandemic. A lot of the things that are happening come down to not opening up patents, not vaccinating the rest of the world. Now, yes, not vaccinating everybody here is a big one as well. Because if we would have just vaccinated like 95% of people, uh, things could not have propagated to the point that they did. Uh, but you, know, you have this, and then you have also no test, trace, and isolate. You have no real surveillance. You don't have any kind of uh, paid supported uh, pause. You don't have any of the things that could easily stop this. And it scares me because I, I feel like people, you know, all we are is like one bad mutation away from something that is like worse than Omicron that, I, I mean, already with Omicron, people are getting reinfected a lot. So you imagine it's not, I mean, the idea that people have is like, okay, let her rip, people die. And then you're sorted out, right? Everybody's going to have it. Everybody's going to have protective immunity from it. It's basically like vaccinating people without vaccinating people, except it doesn't work because the vaccination produces much better immunity than um, the, the air quotes natural infection. And, you know, you imagine another, another strain comes up that has an even higher R0, R0, naught, depending on which country you're in. And is also better at evading the immune system and maybe is as lethal or potentially more so because there's no real selective pressure there on a short time on a long enough time scale there is selective pressure but on a short time scale there's not really selective pressure to avoid something being more more virulent so you take all of that stuff and if we get unlucky there like it's not a guarantee hopefully it won't happen but if we get unlucky there, you could imagine a scenario where people are like, oh shit, now we should start doing the shit that we should have done two years ago, but it's too late. Because two years ago, you had a very low r naught, you had something that was much more containable, you had something that we could actually stop, whereas now, it's already bad, and another mutation or two down, like, when I say another mutation, I mean you know, 
series of mutations, but another strain or two down the road, you could have something that's much worse and that is such a wildfire that we can't stop it. Or at least, you know, like maybe to stop it, you have to do really extreme measures. And I just have this horrible feeling like people will finally go, oh shit, let's take care of this and it'll be too late. With that or with Trump, with climate, the climate catastrophe. I mean, you know, people don't even think about that much. And yet, yeah. So anyway, with that, I'm going to take a quick walk before I go because I've been working most of the day and I just uh, like to move a little bit, you know. Especially this time of year when I can go outside during the day and not be sweating so much that I need to take a shower if I go on a short walk. Because that is, that's another reason I would not mind getting the fuck out of here because the summer here just gets to me. More and more, you know, like I, I love walking and here now I go out in the summer and I'm just drenched in sweat and I have to take a shower. Even if I take a short walk, and there are times during the day when I can't even take a fucking walk. And also, like, I'd be on a Zoom call and uh, the, the phone in my hand or even in my pocket is overheating. It's, it's bad. You know, it, like, overheats and shuts down. That's not good. And it's probably not good for me. I don't know what the wet bulb temperature is, but uh, I'm sure it's not good. Anyway, with all of that, thank you, as always. Um, hopefully take some things a little bit more seriously. You know, I'm not trying, not trying to freak people out, but I would just like, you know, I don't know, maybe there are some things that we could do something about. Oh, or we could just wait until it's too late. Yeah, it's our choice, but uh, I, I'd much rather do things when you have the opportunity to, and when it's not like massively, you know, I mean, you think about like climate change. In the 1980s, if we would have just put ourselves on the right course, we'd be in such a good shape now. And instead, um, no, just kept, you know, burn, baby, burn, all that kind of bullshit. Um, you know, it's, it's nicer not to, to get yourself into that kind of situation. Because it's like your car. You're driving your car and you fuck it up and it's just fucked. And now, you know, now you got a fucked up car. Except this time it's the planet that you live on and, um, yeah. Or the democracy, democratic republic that you live in. Anyway, with that, thanks again, and Zaijian.